marching transcended race, religion, politic, class, gender, and sexual orientation. And he did all of that in his years more, um, striving for equality, respect, and diversity. And without further ado, we're just going to start tonight's proceedings. And I would like you all to give a warm welcome to our Sinn Féin Vice President and TD for Dublin, Mary Lou MacDonald. was very new Belfast. And did you see the way Morching really enjoyed that? <laughs> Talk about laughing it up. Um, any set of elections uh, are significant, particularly for those that contest them um, and for those that support them, be it activists, fellow party members, fellow candidates, and of course people's families. I know that Marcin and Willie are here uh, in, this in this part of Belfast has uh, incredible support, a very committed team and the support of his family. I know and it's been, uh, Deirdre has referred to it already that in the course of his term as mayor of Belfast, I think Marcin probably <coughs> defied very many stereotypes that might be attached to people who are Sinn Feiners. He certainly, I think, defied and challenged any number of prejudices that confront and challenge all of us uh, here in Belfast or indeed in my own home city uh, of Dublin. For me, Marcin represents uh, what is best about the potential for political change that exists right across the country. All of us know that we've come through very, very tough times, not least economically. Things have been very challenging for people. People have lost their livelihoods, some have lost their homes, some have lost hope itself. But of course, at any time of great adversity and challenge, you also have an immense, immense mine of opportunity. And Ireland stands on the brink of big, big possibilities. We believe that the possibility is to create a new Ireland, a new society, a society that's based on social justice, on equality, on fair play, and a decent chance for all of our citizens, men and women, black and white, Protestant, Catholic, dissenter, Muslim, none of the above. That's what we need to see. And Morcheen, I have no doubt, can lead us and has a proven track record in that regard. 
Ireland is very different now, even to the, the country that I grew up in. And without being indiscreet, March, it would be different again from the Ireland that Marching grew up in. Um, that was an ageist remark, which is deeply politically incorrect, and for which I apologize unreservedly <laughs> at this point. Um, and sometimes, you know, uh, change and difference is very difficult for people because we as, as human beings feel threatened by it. Sometimes we attach far too much to the certainties of how things are and how things have been. And sometimes that means that we miss the potential of what can be. Belfast, for me, uh, is a cockpit in Ireland of what can be economic potential, educational potential, cultural potential to be a leader, to be a leader for other cities across our country. And I want Marching and Willier to be front and centre in that crusade. Sinn Féin has had a, a series of very successful election contests. We've uh, record numbers of people elected in the south to the parliament in Dublin, to the Dáil, and right in local authorities right across the country. And we're very anxious to use that political strength in the best interests of all of our people, in the best interests of developing a strong, vibrant, sustainable and fair economy, in the best interests of decent public services, and in the best interests of the happiness, happiness and well-being of all of our people. I think we can do all of that. But I don't take it for granted that it will just happen because those are, in my view, the right things to happen. I know that we have to work for those things. So I hope in the course of the election campaign that along with Maureen and other candidates, that we can set out the stall of what Belfast can be, of what Belfast must be, and that we can elect this man as a member of Parliament. In, uh, in the Dáil, where a number of us uh, are elected since 2011, we're the largest Sinn Féin team now in, in, in the Dáil. Uh, and sometimes, although we're Ireland's oldest political party, we're still regarded as new kids on the block. Because, of course, we're outside of the established Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, the old groove uh, of politics. And I think anybody observing Sinn Féin whether in the north uh, or in the south, certainly in the Dáil, would register the fact that we do do our politics differently. Uh, that we are about more than rhetoric, and that when we talk about equality, we mean it. When we talk about building a new and decent society, we mean it. And when we say to people and ask people to give us the opportunity to deliver that, we mean that too. So, Guramila Mamaga, thank you for having me here this evening. And I want to wish Morchi and all of you the very, very best. Thank you, Miriam. As Miriam touched on, we are a party that does politics with a difference. And Morchi definitely does politics with a difference and an election launch with a difference. And I'm going to, you're going to have a bit of music from Joby Fox, who is from West Belfast, oh. has been a musician his whole life, and is part of the Folk Town Market campaign in the city centre. And he's just going to play something for you now. Bell, 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 how I love you so. You're like him. You're like it. Sense, sense, change. Though the bond still remains, I'll be with you until the day. Oh. 
<coughs> and the work that they were involved in, whether it be the riots in the streets, or the attempt to kill police officers, or in fact the killing of uh, a prison officer, David Black, stands in marked contrast to the leadership given by Lurchin and Wheeler in this city uh, over one year of that two year period. Someone who was prepared to put his head above the parapet to show broad mindedness, inclusiveness, and as a result of being probably the most extraordinary Lord Mayor that Belfast has ever seen, reached out the hand of friendship to everyone. <coughs> and almost everyone accepted that hand of friendship. That's me leadership. And that for me represents the new kind of politics that we all need to be involved in. Showing a real spirit of generosity to each other and not being afraid to put our heads above the parapet. I've had to do that on several occasions over the course of this peace process and particularly over the course of the last seven years. Probably most notably whenever uh, Patrick Amanzar and Mark Clumsy were killed at Antrim Barracks. And that was a difficult journey for Republicans all over this island to make with me. To stand and make it absolutely clear that under no circumstances were we going to, within the political process, tolerate the worst efforts of those who tried to plunge us back to the past. And what I said at the time, just the moment, a lot of people who were very critical of my remarks. But those were essential remarks. To move this process forward requires all of us to be working in concert to build a better future for everybody that we represent. And as we approach on to an election, elections <laughs> invariably means that political parties take up stances against each other tear strips of each other, they can become very personal, and so forth. I don't believe in any of that. I believe that in this election, Merchant and Wheeler, representing Sinn Féin, stands on behalf of a new type of politics, representing a new type of politician. A politician that wants to make things work. A politician that wants to work with others in an inclusive way. A politician who is determined <laughs> to ensure that within society, nobody feels left out. And that means embracing the concept of equality, that every democratic government anywhere on the planet has an important duty to, uh, to develop in the interest of all citizens. So big challenges lie ahead. We've just come through, as I said, a very rocky period. Started off with uh, flag protests, with the whole issue of parades, and then of course the whole issue of uh, identity and how we give expression to, in a very inclusive way, all the identities that exist here uh, in the north of Ireland. And that then led us to, on the back of a number of uh, demands, uh, most notably by ourselves, for everybody including the two governments to come round the negotiating table. And of course, the doom and gloom merchants predicted that there would be no agreement, or that if there was an agreement, the agreement wouldn't be implemented. Well, against all the odds, we had an agreement, not a perfect agreement, not a comprehensive agreement, but it's an agreement that effectively saved the institution. <coughs> because without that agreement, what would have happened, for example, if there had been no budget agreed? All power would have passed from our administration to unelected civil servants who would have imposed a 75% budget, bringing far more extreme measures than what we're dealing with at the moment. And then ultimately, power would have passed to uh, a British government that gets no votes in North of Ireland, who would have immediately imposed water charges, picked up student fees, and God knows what else would have come down the track. So the institutions were saved effectively by the Stormont House Agreement. And the challenge now 
is for all of us to uh, develop that agreement and implement that agreement in a way that delivers for everyone and gives confidence to everyone that we have the ability to take the difficult decisions and to move uh, our process forward. I have to say during the two year period, absolutely dismaying to see that the car was burnt up in our dive. The photograph of it could appear in the front page of the San Paulo newspapers. And of course, the media loves bad news. The good news doesn't really go reported in the same fashion as the bad news. The fact that even against the backdrop of a world economic downturn, we managed to bring in more foreign direct investment jobs <coughs> to the North Ireland in the last three or four years than any other time in the history of the state. So of course all of that is overlooked. It's overlooked because our politics becomes dominated by riots in the streets, by flag protests, by demands to parade wherever you like. And so what we now need to do is find solutions to these problems. And the Stormont House Agreement gives us a breathing space to do that. On the past, which many people thought was the most difficult issue to resolve, we have found a way forward. We have uh, agreed between us uh, mechanisms and bodies which will provide a, a menu of options for people who are victims of the conflict. And I think that's far in advance of anything that we've seen anywhere else in a conflict situation in the world. So that represents for me a real step forward. On the issue of parades, we have challenged ourselves <coughs> by June of this year to come up with a process uh, which uh, will ultimately resolve the contention mainly that exists around the North Belfast uh, situation. But my message of parades is very, very clear. And this is someone who has been through the Hillsborough negotiations where I actually managed to get an agreement with Peter Robinson, an agreement which was put to the Orange Order and which the Ulster Unionist Party argued against at that meeting. And we, we effectively lost the vote by five or six votes. So now the challenge for politicians is to recognize first and foremost, we're the government. We should not need the, pers the permission of any group in society to decide for us how parades are going to be dealt with. And the challenge for us is to put in place a process which everybody else will have to respect and abide by the law. And that's the challenge for politicians in the time ahead. Similarly, in relation to the whole issue of identity, the commission that has been proposed, which does fall well short of what we and the Alliance Party and others would have liked to see, and said does provide an opportunity for us to have a mature debate about how we go forward recognizing symbols, emblems, and the whole issue of identity. And I look forward to people engaging in that debate. Of course, the other big challenge that we faced was the fact that we're dealing with a very ruthless uh, conservative led government in London, a government that has effectively cluttered our black rank over the course of the period that they have been in power. And in the course of that negotiation, that we had a very derisory offer from David Cameron, which turned to not a great offer, but a far better offer, with the five parties in the executive, the five main parties in the assembly, stood together, put it up to the British government, and we got a, an enhanced package, which gives us considerable flexibility to face on to the economic challenges that we face in the time ahead. So here we have a very important election coming up. We have a fantastic candidate in South Belfast. We also have all our parties running around trying to portray themselves as kingmakers in the event of a close election in England. Well, my view is that one of two scenarios is going to happen in England. The Conservatives are going to get re-elected and they're going to go back into government again with the Liberal Democrats. That's doubtful that the Liberal Democrats will do that. Our Labour uh, will come out top and they will go into government with the support of the, the Scottish National Party and maybe the Liberal Democrats. I don't see any of the parties 
in the North of Ireland be key makers in relation to the outcome of the next British general election, much and all as they try to propagate that notion. So here we are, as far as we're concerned in Sinn Féin, the politics that needs to work are the politics on this island. And for me, the next important phase of our process, which I hope the Stronger House Agreement gives an opportunity for us to develop, is the next essential phase of our process, which has to be a genuine phase of reconciliation between us. Not just between different identities in the north, but between the north and the south of this island, because developing an all island economy is actually in the best interest of all of the people who live on the island of Ireland. And that's a message that I think we need to hammer home uh, consistently. What are the examples? Well, the examples are very smart, as we are now doing done the new radiotherapy unit at Abbey Gelbert Hospital to treat people from County Donegal, County Tyrone, County Derry. The decision to have uh, surgery for children who have heart uh, defects in Dublin is another example of how we can go forward. And there are a plethora of other examples of how if we work together in terms of education, in terms of health, in terms of the economy, in terms of foreign direct investment, that, that we can do things much, much better. So here we are, we're on the uh, threshold effectively of an election. The politics of this island is what's important. Electing leaders who are prepared to put their head above the parapet, who are prepared to show real leadership, who are prepared to be compassionate to everybody in society and recognize the responsibility as political leaders that they have. There will be no greater champion for Belfast or for the island of Ireland than electing Marcina Wooler as the next LP for South Belfast. Marcina Wooler's uh, reputation precedes him everywhere. I have recently been in the United States and meetings with the State Department, was at the State of U Union address with Obama. All the Irish American politicians that I met during the course of what was a 36 hour visit. Well, it mentioned Martin and Wooder and how impressed they were with the contribution that he made to enhance the lives of the people of Belfast. So, this is about a new future, folks. It's about new politics. It is about people putting their heads above the parapet. It's about reaching out the hand of friendship and generosity to everybody. I've tried to do that in ways that have been very difficult for some Republicans. My three encounters with uh, Queen Elizabeth, which for me was about reaching out the hand of friendship, not just to her, but maybe more importantly, to the Unionist people of the North. And, and I've told this story a couple of times. One of the most interesting observations that I made after that was that not one Unionist politician said to me, Martin, that was a good thing that you did. And that came home to me in a very profound way. Because essentially, if they were saying that to me, they were also probably in the back of their heads saying, Queen Elizabeth, you know. And if we are to progress to a normal society, if we are to really be involved in the work of conflict resolution, reconciliation, build a better future, those big acts of reconciliation and more at grassroots level is where we all need to go. And that's a lesson everybody needs to learn. So I hope all of you here will give your support to Marchie, as he represents my politics. I think I represent his politics. And I think we, both of us represent a Sinn Féin that's very determined, north and south, to build a better future for everybody that lives in this island. For a million, million, million. to pass you over to the main speaker of tonight. He definitely needs no introduction. 
He may not be able to dance, I've just seen a video before, but he can definitely talk. And as it says in the background, it is about making the change, it's about doing something bold and different. And if anybody's going to deliver that change, it's going to be marching over here. So it's well done. <laughs>
not enough has been done. And I was recently <laughs> very pleased to the South Belfast Partnership Board take on the job of what they're calling the digital champion. And what that means is to go into our schools and emphasize to young people the importance of learning technology, of, of learning ICT, being ready for the new jobs in the economy. But we have the opportunity now on the cost of having our world-class companies and, and South Belfast and the city centre providing thousands of jobs, thousands to our young people if we skill them up. And our colleges have a job in that, our universities have a job in that, our schools have. But imagine this station for South Belfast that we go from the abandoned Mesley Leisure Centre, where Concentrics are now at work and we'll move in in November. Concentrics, the, the I, I, IT company based in California, where there's a thousand new jobs. So where Mesley was a wasteland, we'll have 2,000 jobs in total. Behind that, all state are going to move in with 1,200 jobs and add another 200 computer engineering jobs on the front of the water. For 20 years, the Gasworks site has been in Idle. We did this great job in the city. We created the Gasworks site with different uses of hotel, offices, jobs, and then we left at least one half of it incomplete. And now we're on the cusp of developing the Gasworks site to create jobs for, for this new tech economy. We're also going to create housing and create leisure. And think of that then as a new South Belfast. If you go from Mesley right up and you have a whole transformed waterfront of leisure, of jobs, uh, of, of hope, of ambition. And I'm sure that's going to happen because the person driving that is a very capable woman who's very first in matters economic. People think I'm going to say Arlene Foster. <laughs> <laughs> but not the story of Arlene is the chair of the Belfast. Yep. <laughs> The icing on the kick for me and that is that we're going to take back the leg. And whenever we take it back to city, we're going to take back the leg. And 60 years ago, we turned our backs on the river. Every other city in Europe is going to the river, recognizing it's the beating heart of the city, that we should be proud of the river, that we should be cherishing the river, that we should make it a, 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 an asset, a treasure of, of everyone. We turned our back on the river. This week, I'm pleased to say that Belfast City Council the Bain team in that council has agreed to spend £4.7 million to start rejuvenation of the Lagan. It really is a duel in the crown of Belfast from the city centre, Titanic Belfast, to Strandellis and above. We will have a river and a river front, which will be good for recreation, good for tourism, good for health, but good for us as a city to go back to the river and use the river. And that decision was taken this week as well. So imagine this new vision of a South Belfast which delivers for ordinary people. When I travel, uh, when I travel abroad to sell Belfast in the best possible way and promote Belfast, and, and last week over three days, it was, I took the baton from Martin. I was in Toronto, Boston, and New York over three days uh, last week. We have a great story to tell. People now know the story of Belfast. They know we're a city on the rise, and as part of that, in May of last year. I signed with Marty Walsh, the mayor of Boston, the sister city of Green. For me, that's a game changer in this city. Uh, every city in Ireland is to have that status and have that relationship. But we have it with Boston. It's up to us now to find the to deliver that. The capital of Irish America, the capital of university education in America, the capital of life sciences. And they want to be our sister city. They want to build a relationship with us. And this year, we will see the greatest ever and they sit up between Boston and Belfast and we bring four of their college ice hockey teams to Belfast to, to play the first ever ice hockey college tournament outside of America. What's important to that? Of course, it's going to be a money spinner to the city, but it makes Belfast look outwards. And Belfast needs to look forward and the future will also needs to look outwards. So that's my pledge to you as well, that we will not be an insurer community that I will not be an insular MP, that our focus is always on making connections, and connections which will rebound back to the city and build the city. I want to talk as well about the wonderful treasures of, of South Belfast and the artistic treasures in particular. It's no secret that, that the most distressing part of the recent budget for me was the pressure on arts and community, but I believe that is the, 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 the hub of innovation and creativity. But we have a wonderful learning theatre built with the help of Belfast City Council and the executive. We have a reimagined 
Ulster Museum. We need now to get behind the arts community in South Belfast. Uh, we need to ensure that they get the resources they need to be the soul of South Belfast as we move ahead. They need to connect back into the community. And if anyone doesn't understand the power of arts to transform and build community, then they haven't heard about the fact that when I appointed Tinead Morrissey as Port Laureate of Belfast, it had a amazing electrifying effect right across this city that it lifted people's hearts, that it showed our values, and that it was warmly welcome. So, and I did that with a great public servant called Wishing McDonald, who heads up the Arts Council, a selfless defender of communities. And as long as Wishing's in that job, hopefully she'll be fighting against cuts, she'll be fighting for more resources. And I want to be with Wishing McDonald's. Uh, all, all our community, our arts community, to make sure that the arts move forward with the rest of South Belfast. No longer hiding our head under a bushel. We need to be proud of the arts, we need to build the arts and build the arts community. I want to talk as well about education um, because what gave me great heart when I was mayor of the city was the ebullience I saw in the, in the schools, the passion of the teachers, the courageous leadership of principals. And, I, I, and, and, and as an MLA, I've had a great force to be invited back to schools. But I want to talk about the school which probably has the toughest education job in South Belfast. That's the Roman Integrated College. 26 different languages are spoken by their pupils at home. They are working not only with more ethnic minority children than any other school in the city, but they're also the school for the working class Protestants of Donegal Pass and the village. They have a huge task, and I, I'm always impressed by the determination of Mara Thompson, the principal, and the entire school body. But if we really believe that our priorities are to tackle need and tackle disadvantage of resources there, then they should have the greatest school building in South Belfast. And John Dow has recently agreed to put a new gym in, but I, I'm pledging on behalf of you that we need to deliver the school to our own college, which is commensurate with the ability of the children with our belief and confidence in those children, and also commensurate with the passion and dedication of the teaching staff there. John O'Dowd has done a good job. Another gentleman here who was education minister did a great job as, as and Katrina Rianne did. And I was pleased last year that Skull and Dryhead, the Irish language school in, in the market, got permission for a new school. I think that's going to usher in an entirely new era for the Irish language in South Belfast. It was that, our Gamradi, Gareth O'Carroll, and Shabbos Breed, so he needs to be Mark Hunradi. So the pioneers of the Irish language are talking about Gareth O'Carroll here, and Breed, Hugo Bellar, who will definitely welcome as well. <laughs> but we did the hard work in the state of public tuition. Four gender made primary school Tuesday, that word is allowed to expand to 450 children. Uh, I visited Rothmore to get uh, bothered about the head by the principal about education cuts. Uh, she then said to me when it was reversed to, to somebody, we said, you knew all about that, of course, I knew nothing at all. Um, but she said, I want to thank Martin McGinnis for delivering this beautiful open modern school. And she said, but he also delivered one to our rivals in the finest. Uh, and then Bethany College last year was among a, a list of schools which received 170 million pound refurbishment and refurbishment. We need to make sure that we enable education to transform the lives of our young people. And that's a, a job of work at which we have to get better. Uh, it's not acceptable that 20% of young males in receipt of free school meal, meals don't get the five crucial GCSEs they need to succeed. Uh, we, we are working hard up, we need to push harder. We need to push harder to make sure that every young person succeeds. I want to say as well, there's a lot of entrepreneurs here tonight, uh, business leaders, um, Gareth Macklin's here from Little Village, which shows great generosity. He's been the arrival hotel. Uh, they hear the pitch tonight. John Bushel's here from the Finney Traders Association. When I did the city hall, I pledged we would do more for the for the small traders uh, and the small retailers. Not only because they're entitled to support, because because when the retail sector goes, when shops close, community fails. And I was pleased that in one year alone, in 2013, Belfast City Council spent. Two hundred fifty thousand pound backing our, our small businesses on the front of on the front of the roads and making sure that they become the engine and the heart of the community. We need to continue that, and that's my pledge. So above all that, I'm happy that I'll be judged on job creation in the time ahead.
but that's okay because I've spent 20 years creating jobs. I've spent 20 years encouraging entrepreneurship, and today I'm pleased to lead businesses which employ over 50 people in this city. So I want to take that experience, I want to put it to use for South Belfast. I want to say a word as well about the ethnic minorities in Belfast. We do so much for Belfast. There's no area more diverse, more culturally diverse than South Belfast. We are blessed with that diversity. Uh, and I know that uh, we're Turks here, and Dr. Ryan's here from the Islamic uh, community, of the Islamic Cultural Center. Um, the contribution of our Filipino uh, community, our Polish community, our African community, is absolutely monumental. And our job isn't only to stop the racist attacks, which are absolutely abhorrent and deplorable, but our job is to make sure that they play a full role in the city, that we encourage the diversity, because the ethnic minorities are going to see it Belfast. They are the brightest light on the horizon of Belfast. We need to make sure, far from people attacking the homes of our ethnic minority, we need to make sure that they're at the pinnacle of this society and at the center of everything we do. And in that respect, where is the greatest center of intercultural activity in South Belfast? In Belfast, it's the Shaftesbury Recreation Center. How do we call it a recreation center with 50% or 60% of its work is actually encouraging diversity? Helping immigrants and asylum seekers and refugees, making sure that they can play a full role in societies beyond that. I've been asked to call themselves Ireland's national intercultural promotion society because they do such great work. But the message goes out from our campaign is that the ethnic minorities are dear to us. We're grateful that they're here. We want to see Belfast become more diverse in the time ahead. And we will face down those voices that are raised uh, from those who wish to uh, send away from. Our city, expel from our city, who sure bring us so much cultural diversity and richness. It's important that we recognize the change makers and peace builders. And uh, there's many sporting organizations here tonight, which is which is wonderful because not often the sporting organizations are doing more to try and change than anyone than anyone else. And if you don't believe that, then ask Kai Harlick when rugby club, they play cricket happy as well. That they became across community based for the you know, Breeze GAA. So I want to commend the, the sports change makers in society. I want to ask them to keep on going because usually and often they do more in government programs. But I want to salute in particular the peacemakers. And if we had the those of us who are old enough had the name a year of our darkest year of recent times, 1981. What happened in 1981 in South Belfast? Was it Fitzroy? Presbyterian? joined with Clannard Monastery to set up the Fitzroy Clannard Fellowship. It could be argued that the entire peace process, the success of the process, and the, bit, and the part that Ali Green and Ken you know, later started there. I'm not a person of faith, but I have huge respect for the faith communities. And I have huge respect for those who preach the gospel but don't use words. And if you want to know what that means, go to the International Meeting Point, the Presbyterian International Meeting Point, behind us on the Lisbon Road. Any day at lunchtime, you'll see 100 people Hundred people of great spirit, but they're there for, 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 for a free lunch, for the hospitality and the generosity of the Presbyterian community of South Belfast. So I want to make the faith community partners right across all the different religions. I want to make them partners in the time ahead. And I've experienced that because when I was there, I appointed nine chaplains, which was a breakthrough for the city. And my British chaplain, Paul Haller, I said to him, Paul, you know, we have a special duty of prayer to me. He said, it's okay, I deal with hopeless cases all the time. <laughs> so so let's, build, let's build our, our community as well. In the and let's stand behind those heroes of change, people who are, are fearless and standing up for, for a new society. Let's transform lives. Let's get things done. Uh, let's make sure we deliver for people. And I'm confident that, that I can deliver. Um, and I'm buoyed by the many positives I see across South Belfast. And I want to just say one word about Queen's University. When I met Bonnie Johnson, the VC, yes, he wanted to give all the cups as well. But we had a good discussion. And I was really heartened by, he said his third part of his mission was to lift up the city. And that's a pledge I want to hold him to, because Queen's, with its over 2,000 employees, over 17,000 students, a budget of maybe 280 million pounds. Queen's has to be the engine of driving this community, this city forward. And it needs to embrace the rest of the community, the rest of the city, and make sure it lifts up the city as, as it also is lifted up. So when I make a promise to deliver, and we, we, we stand or fall on our ability, our ability to deliver. When I make a promise to deliver, I do it in the knowledge that Team Sinn Féin 
is stronger now than ever before. I mean, within the City Hall in 1987, there was a handful of Sinn Féin councillors. Uh, I wore a flak jacket to meetings. Uh, we were, I was banned from Lord Murray's Cars. Yes, it was a nice hour then when I, when I finally went back. Uh, we were barred from all, all committees. Uh, today, in Belfast City Council, the, the Super Council, there are 19 Sinn Féin councillors with the power to deliver. In the Assembly, there are 29 Sinn Féin MLAs and in the executive, five ministers. They stand shoulder to shoulder with me to make sure that we can deliver for South Belfast. And the Dow, we are by far the leading opposition party, uh, assailing the policies of austerity which are wrecking the country and giving hope to people. And you know that every time we see TV, I mean, look at who's coming, coming on, we keep TV on. We know she gives a great part of story, great sustenance. So we have not only Super Council, Sinn Féin standing with me to deliver for South Belfast, not only the Assembly and the Executive and the Dow, but also in every constituency in, in the country, we have a European MEP from his head to Malin the head, Sinn Féin is represented in Europe at a time when Europe is, is, is on the cusp of huge transformation. So that's why I believe we can deliver. And some people will say, don't vote for Sinn Féin because uh, it won't, they won't deliver. And my answer is, well, Pat Doherty, the MP for West Jerome, has just delivered <coughs> the Lisson Nelly, former British Army base, which took up one quarter of the whole land mass of Oma. He's just delivered that as a shared campus, uh, 3,000 children, six new schools, 150 million pounds, which would be a, a, a total game changer for, for West Jerome and for Oma. I say, I want to deliver the way that Paul Maskey has delivered this week in saving St. Mary's University College in our university. <laughs> The future of 340, 350 jobs, the future of 2,000 students, a bright future fund. Still fighting for a short future for, for our young people, a pluralist education system, but at the same time understanding the impact that we'd have had, the devastating impact on West Belfast and the impact also in South Belfast, of just ripping out those university colleges uh, yeah. overnight, which was what was proposed. So I point to those MPs and I say they're delivering, and that's how I will deliver for you as well. So the challenges are enormous, but the opportunity is enormous as well. This election is in play like never before. South Belfast, leadership of South Belfast, and your ability to change the leadership of South Belfast is in your grasp. I'm asking you to make me the MP for South Belfast so I can continue the work that I have been doing, that I can be your representative, that I can be your bridge builder and peacemaker, that I can hold out the hand of friendship to our, to, to our unionist neighbours, to our ethnic minorities, to everyone who feels that they are being pushed to the back of us. I want you to, what come May, to make an investment with your vote. And maybe that's because I come from a business background as well. So invest wisely in May, and I promise you and guarantee you that it will be returned, your investment will be returned many times. So the job is very straightforward. You need to build new Belfast, Every day, all the time, you need to boost New Belfast, you need to invest in New Belfast, and of course you need to fund New Belfast.
Well, Laura, thank you. 